Hello, my legends. Welcome to another how to video again, this time highlighting on Office 365. And perhaps this video can apply to you, especially with things going on. Here's here's the client exact words I posted here on the video. Right. So basically, they're saying that they believe because of this Russian Ukraine thing going on, you know, that they may have inadvertently clicked on a link that one of their account users were using. And now they are no longer allowed to send out emails, right? It says undeliverable 550. In fact, I have the code here. This one. 550.1. Point eight access denied bad outbound sender. Okay, basically you are blocked. Now, if you do an MX toolbox, this is always one good area to check or double check is type in that domain that you think that you're being effective at or affected by and uh, hit blacklist check. And if it pulls up here, then there's that's the separate video from this one. You'll need to go through this tool. It'll tell you where to click, where to get um possibly unblocked from uh but this case is office 365 so when i ran this test everything came back okay they weren't blacklisted it was strictly this problem here let me see if i can find it. this one okay they are restricted user lists why because they clicked on something their account was uh shown on the office 365 as being as sending out too much spam okay so internally to protect itself, so it's not blacklisted, Microsoft has an internal defense that pushes them to this restricted user list. Now, we're gonna go through this step-by-step, step, which is basically how to remove a user. So we've changed their password, changed their, uh, you know, enhanced their security with two-factor authentication, um, looked and reviewed through each of their policies, their senders lists, their contacts lists, you know, cleaned up the whole thing. So you need to do those steps before you do this, right? Because um, if you unlock them, they're just going to continually send out spam again. OK, so we need to make sure that those things are in place first and then go through this step. So that was like a, a little a warning or a bridged warning there. Um, I'm going to turn this down on my headset. OK. <clears throat> OK, so moving forward. So this it gets confusing. So this has been updated. This once was part of and if you were looking, it would it would probably shock you because if you go into your office administrative account, let me see if I can pull it up. There used to be something called the Exchange Center. OK, yeah, exactly. So there used to be something called the Exchange Center. And I'm in where you could on the le on the left hand side here, you can go to security and uh, look through and find the things that are on Google that tell you what to do. But that is very misleading. It doesn't actually work. You need to go to security.microsoft.com and this will open you up to the correct area. Now, once you're in security.microsoft.com, which I'll copy this link, we'll open it up in another browser because you have to, make sure you're signed in with the correct admin credentials for your domain right so usually it's admin at on microsoft so actually admin at your domain dot on microsoft dot com okay now you're in the right area now we can look at incidents reports um see if anybody's sending something they shouldn't have uh no data for, um submissions etc okay now here's the problem You'll probably notice there's nothing here. And why is that? It's because I'm not in their tenant. I'm under my partner portal and that doesn't work. Right. So if you are a partner, this is what we're going to go through. So this one gets super confusing. Um, so they tell you to go here and they tell you to um, unblock that user, but that doesn't work. So first things you need to do. <laughs> And they don't tell you this either. It's kind of annoying. You need to connect delegated permissions for the exchange so that you can run and utilize those security tools on their tenant. Ah, super annoying, right? So if you're if you're a partner and you're trying to connect to a tenant who 
uh, to their exchange so you can use security dot on Microsoft under them because otherwise what happens is it takes you to your tenant and that's not what we want we don't want to go to our tenant we want to go to their tenant so you need to do the following so open up um, this right here in fact we're gonna start a new one so oh I meant to leave that open oh well so we'll follow this. So there's a few steps here that actually are manageable and are easy. So that's an easy one. So copy and paste that one in. The one that's misleading is this one. This is you need to rerun. The command that you need to run uses the following syntax. So you think you copy it, you know, you modify it and sign in with your credentials and how it's supposed to be, you know. So I copied that out, wrote, wrote this in, you know. And just kind of went through this whole thing and so you go through your value so we'll type in mine uh, right you just keep going through this whole thing oh wait i'm sorry this is um 0365 default and we know that because if you go to um, to elaborate on what these variables are, if you wanted to go through each one, this will this little URL will tell you and explain. So this one's telling you to use that, which I may have spelled wrong. So we're just gonna nick it, paste it, right. And then this string is your partner. But you're going to laugh at what this what this does here. So but I want you guys to see it. That way we know we're all on the same page. So you're just going to fill this string of syntax to match what you need. But here's what happens if you try to follow this. So we're going to bring this back. We're going to... Okay, so if that happens... See, I cannot get this to work. I have no idea what the problem is. So how do you move on? How do you keep moving forward? Well, see, they don't really tell you that. And you just kind of continue to expect to see what you're supposed to see. And see, like this one is telling us to use our own Microsoft account, which I can try. In fact, let's just do it now just for uh, giggles sake. Let's go to... Um, so right now I'm on the screen. I'm just going to the admin center. Okay. And I want to show you my screen, but this is an actually our tenant. And I don't want to give anything away, but. I'm going to paste it in. And again, right? So it just doesn't work. I can't, uh, rightfully tell you guys to do this. It, it, it doesn't work. So here's something you can do, which does work, which is oop, just that super simple, right? Actually, I don't want to add. The... Now it won't add it to your partner page, which is what we were trying to do. Yeah. If you guys can get it to work great, I couldn't, no matter what I did, no matter how many times I checked the DNS, no how many times I tried to make my administrator section for my partner work, it doesn't work. Okay. But this does. So admin at on micro microsoft.com and shablammy, right? I'm in. Oops, I meant to hit add. So you can see it's doing stuff there. This is important. Okay. So I'm in, right? So once I'm in, this is what we want to do now. So once you're you're authenticated and we're connected to that tenant, we can just do boop, get block sender to address. Yeah, well, you're just going to have to trust me. I don't know why it's not. There must be a visual bug going on or what, but... Uh, for the CLI, but we're going to do this. We're going to do bring this up. 
And Shabami. Oh, okay. So, there you go. That's one way. So, I was supposed to see if there was, and there wasn't any. So, um, yeah. So, that's one way to do it. But if, let's say, your user was restricted. I did that on purpose. Um, it was the wrong email address. But let's just say that email address was the banned user. That's all you have to do. So, once you get connected via PowerShell to their exchange, um, to your t either your tenant or to your partnering tenant for for their tenant i know that's confusing then uh, as long as you can sign in to their exchange right using this connect exchange online you uh dash user principal name their admin their authorized admin that can make changes on there it'll do this thing it'll it'll pop up the window for you to sign in type in the passwords and then you can enter your information, your commandlets, and this is the one, right? So the first one will is supposed to show you, and remember this is Windows 11 using the new Windows terminal. So for all I know, the new PowerShell, uh, or not the new PowerShell, but the PowerShell 7 on Windows 10 will work just fine and will show you the users that are currently blocked and, uh, and you know, you shouldn't have a problem. Now, if you wanted to see details about why that users this is what the next that's the next code you would send which is get blocked sender address specify who that sender address is because let's say you have a list of i don't know 150 users then you can just specify who it is type in their email address and it will pop out the information now this particular user was wasn't blocked and that's and that tells you that right when i try to remove block sender address and then the name of the person it didn't work right it said no changes were made and it was all red so we know that that user is safe he's not being um marked as a blocked user for sending out emails so we're okay there anyways i just wanted to give that to you give you a little heads up hopefully this was informative for you um and uh thank you for viewing please like subscribe i appreciate it Thanks.